the Gary Kurtz. We have some Star Wars toys on set today. And we're going to take a lot of questions from you guys. It is Collider Jedi Council. We are live. Get ready for it. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to Collider Jedi Council. I am Christian Harloff, a.k.a. Darth Harloff or Harloff Minor, whatever you want to call me. And we're back talking Star Wars this week. I've been out. I've been missing you guys for the last two weeks, but I'm back today to talk Star Wars with some of my favorite friends. And starting with the one and the only Kylo Ken. Ken Knapsack is here. So glad you're back, Christian, because when you. I host, I have a lot of fun, but uh, sometimes I get grumpy, and I got a little grumpy last week. You I did. apologize. <laughs> yeah, right, we'll talk yeah. about why you got grumpy, yeah. but I don't want to talk about your grumpiness right now. Yeah. I want to talk about our guest that I, we've been talking back and forth for, I would say, almost two years at this point. Um, never have done a show together. Finally, get a chance to do it, talking Star Wars right into her the last week. Made it happen. I was going to call her General Horcher, but she said she's still a princess at this point. It's Princess Horcher. <laughs> Kim Horcher is here. Hi, Kim. Hi, everyone. How you Look doing? This is the princess garb. I like it. Yeah. It's good. I'll See, bring a vest next time. I like that you came prepared. You, this is like some people just get names. You came in full garb and you win. This is internet. who I am. I love Ooh. it. <laughs> Put me on your jury. <laughs> <laughs> Who makes this wonderful outfit? Because Catherine L. Hoffer makes this. I love and it. she is a friend of mine. And I recently modeled some Mulan dresses for her. Oh, that's, that's awesome. cool. If you want to check that out. Well, welcome Stuff. to the council today. We're excited to have you on the show. <laughs> um, we're excited in general. Look, there's not a ton of Star Wars news today. There are going to be a lot of things that we're going to talk about with you guys in the live chat, Twitter, the Collider Jedi Council Facebook group. So there's going to be a lot of opportunity for you guys to get some of your topics out there, too. Um, and we also we have a lot of things to get to. I'm going to start with this one. Check this out. Can't talk while I do this. Uh, hey, everybody. We got some special <laughs> stuff. Do you like video games? Do you like playing the games on the TV? Yeah. Yeah. Look at this. It's the Xbox, and it is special for... There's tons of... Well, the Solo's got its Blu-ray coming out, so there's tons of new things yeah. coming out, too. And this is one of the... Xbox. So this came in. 4K. Yeah, you got a chance to win one of these things if you go to solo Xbox sweeps dot com. Uh, that's solo Xbox sweeps dot com. We got the Xbox One here, and it came. Uh, there's so many cool giveaways, and uh, not giveaways. Excuse me, just cool things that are coming down the pike because of this. And I figured let's just open this stuff up right now. There's the Xbox. I'll show you that. But this this came to me. Because my daughter, who's almost seven years old, um, has not had a chance to see Solo yet, but this... Well, you, yes, you're exhibiting some cautious parenting, which is good. Well, what? I mean, my wife is. Yeah, <laughs> I, 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 would, I would show her everything right now if I could, but my wife is taking... Thank God it. for your wife. Have I, you shown her any Star Wars yes, movies? Yes, she has seen episode four, five, six, one and two, mm -hmm. and The Force Awakens. Why not three? I don't know. I think now she could take Anakin burning up and screaming and yelling, but at the time when we first started, the first time she started watching, she was five. Mm -hmm. So I don't know if she was ready for that yet. Um, I think she can watch the rest of them now. I mean, mm -hmm. she's watched some of the Harry, she watched the, the fourth Harry Potter movie. Yeah, it's little darker, yeah. Scary um, when Voldemort shows up. And so we, fire? yeah, so she was, um, she, she was with me and was like, I just need you to be in the room with me when I watch this part. And I was like, absolutely. But anyway, all this stuff came for Solo. And it was, it's, I just want to show you guys some of the yeah. stuff that came in. Um, package came in. This was the one that she loved. She, <gasps> oh, yeah, the yeah. Monopoly Star yeah. Wars one. Because we play, we play all these video games, excuse me, board games. And when she saw that, she lost her mind. She can't wait for that one. That was pretty cool. I can't guarantee you that I'm going to let her keep this one. Um, well... Kim and I are here. Well, we're yeah. here. We Look like this. stuff. <laughs> oh, right. he's so yeah. cute. I mean, yeah, check that out. Look at that. Yeah. So, I've, all these things. I've it, seen that in the store and been afraid to pick it up because I would know it, knew I would take yeah. it home. Well, because that was I got when I get home and, that, and I can't tell you how hard it is. That this huge box comes right. Yeah. And there's all this Star Wars stuff, and I'm like. I have to give this to my daughter. Um, and you see this, like this game, this, this customized solo game inside of this, all these things I didn't even know was coming out. Oh, is that, is that the, they can't call yeah. it Sabak game? Yeah. Not Sabak? Yeah, it's yeah. got the box in it. There's, there's solo Nerf blasters. Uh, I mean, that goes good. So, that's really big, because, though. I didn't yeah. know, because here's the thing. It's not to scale. That's not well, to scale. Remember, though, Ken, this was, this yeah. was the thing, though, is that yeah. when, <laughs> when Solo came out, the merchandising push Right. Wasn't that big because of like Avengers and everything they too. They literally so couldn't. They're making the push now, and this is some of the stuff. So uh, yeah, what, what do you think about this stuff, Ken? 
Well, uh, I literally, I'm not joking, I have this set waiting for me at home because Amazon just delivered it today because I bought it because I was watching Solo for the eighth time this past week. And uh, I was like, I want to play not uh, Sabah because they have to call it the Han Solo card game to do some legalities. Uh-huh. The Han Solo uh, card game. Yes, he yes. invented you know it that one. and <laughs> it's his. Yeah, That's I mean, where he got uh, his So money. I'm excited to play this one at home myself. But uh, Some mini action figures uh, over here. I mean, three it, just, it just doesn't stop. You know, the... the you can Chewy, yeah. yeah the well, chewy. The, the Chewbacca mom helmet. Yeah, I love it. It's great. Oh, so, well, it's interesting. Yeah, you said because they definitely couldn't. I, you know, yeah. I mentioned before, a, 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 a target manager told me they could not put solo end caps out because they had to have Infinity War stuff well, out what I'm gonna until do. two weeks before the release. Well, here's what I'm going to do. Because I, I actually I love all this stuff, and my daughter is going to love it. So, like I said, seven years old. I am going to bring this all home. Mm-hmm. But, yeah. Or what I might do, Ken, mm-hmm. I might package it all up, right. send it FedEx, send it to Wisconsin, and yeah. let the Red Letter Media guys make fun of us for opening this on, the, on, oh, I on air. Great. They probably will do that anyway. I think but that's I have no regrets cool because I love it. Um, God bless those guys. I hope they have a blast um, yeah. making fun of us for this one, but I have no regrets. I love it, and I think that all That's these great. things are amazing. And the Xbox One is here. Once again, if you want to go to the Xbox One, you go to soloxboxsweeps.com, and you can get a chance to do that. Do that. But I think that's great. Loving it. Okay, cool. So let's, uh, let's start with some Star Wars movie news, Ken. You got, I know there's not a ton there right now, but a, there is, there is 5HNP himself, and um, he is going to read some news. What do you yes. got? Let's dive into uh, kind of the headline today. Something we're going to talk about is the passing of Gary Kurtz. Producer Gary Kurtz uh, passed away at 78 years of age. He had been battling cancer. Now, Gary Kurtz, very important to the Star Wars universe as he produced A New Hope and Empire Strikes Back along with George Lucas. They had a uh, working relationship that stretched back to Lucas's USC days, producing American graffiti. And infamously or famously, depending on your point of view, Kurtz left uh, the Star Wars franchise prior to Return of the Jedi. He and George had some creative differences, and Kurtz has been, uh, he'd been prickly about it over the years, and George is George. He's got that you know, flannel shirt, kind of stern look on his face all the time. You can never really read George's mind, but uh, they had a relation that was described as professional towards the end. Uh, Kurtz uh, gave an interview in 2010 that was pretty uh, interesting when, you talk, uh, when you're talking about the making of Return of the Jedi and why he left, why he felt he left. But that's part of the negative thing that happened. Uh, Gary Kurtz was a great producer. He went on, he, was, he went on to produce the Dark Crystal movie that scared me in the theater, and I haven't watched it since. Yeah. What are those creatures? I'm sure you've. What are they? I'm looking Skeksis. at oh, Skeksis. Skeksis. I was gonna say the same thing too. I I watched uh, not in the theaters, but I watched yeah. The Dark Crystal. Yeah. And Return to Oz from my cooler friend in middle school who right. was like, "Check out this stuff." And I was, it it made me feel insane. I the wheelies, <laughs> the wheelies in Return to Oz. Oh yeah. The it's scary too as well. Much. The Skeksis were, yeah. which he produced as well. Yeah. Mm. Gary yeah. Kurtz, uh, an interesting legacy. So we're going to talk about him. Man. Yeah, man. I mean, he was one of the greatest <laughs> producers. Uh, he, he, his stamp was all over the first two films in, in the original trilogy and what he meant to Star Wars fans. He was a, a legendary name, almost a monarch, a, a part of the monarch in, inside of... Um, Inside of the Star Wars legacy, mm-hmm. he is um, he will be greatly missed. His his creative stamp will be greatly missed, and his legacy will live on. Every time, like we, we were just talking about, how I showed my daughter the first two movies, like mm-hmm. that. Gary Kurtz has a lot to do with why those movies were as good as they were. But Kim, I think he's a big reason why Empire was so good. I agree. Because I. Th- I had read they were budgeted for 100 days of filming, and it went to 178, and he helped direct it mm. in some ways, among some other people as well, mm. and he just stayed until, you know, as, as long as he could, further than he was supposed to, until someone else came in and took over the last few weeks <laughs> due to disagreements. Uh, I mean, we talked about the disagreements, like they're this dark cloud, but he has a few points. Yeah. Which are, you know, he thought that uh, Jedi was, the ending was too happy, it wasn't dark enough, and it did essentially end on a teddy bear picnic. Mm -hmm. So he's not wrong. Yub nub. Yub nub. -nub. What was funny about that is because George, and I would like to really know the inside of what really happened there because I read something recently. George Lucas, inside of a room, pitched a very dark ending. I I hate the ending that he pitched, but it was a dark ending for Jedi, Mm -hmm. which was Luke 
at the end has the mask after Vader dies, puts the mask on, says, now I am Vader, and kills all the rebels. And that was shot down in the room by, by people he was working with. Like, maybe we shouldn't go that route. But because we know that he wanted to go, Gary Kurtz said, has wanted to go darker, I wonder where they struggled. I wonder where the disconnect was. I, I read that Kurtz wanted, was pushing for the Han Solo death. Right. Yeah. In, in Empire and, and Jedi? Just every time every he time could. Every time he's gone. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so was Harrison. Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, yeah, absolutely. You're right, Kim. He, he, he felt, that, again, like a lot of people, even Lawrence Kasdan has talked about, there should be some kind of cost for this. Uh, Harrison felt... Han had nothing to do, but but Kurtz, I think what's interesting to notice about Kurtz is they began at USC or, you know, George came out of USC. I do believe Kurtz went there as well. I don't, I don't want to mis misspeak on that, but um, George was, and, and considers himself still this experimental filmmaker. Well, Kurtz, look at this picture. That's yeah, like yeah. a, that's like an artist from like 69 with right. that beard and the glasses. That, and that's not like an Instagram photo no, today. Like, yeah. hey, make me, I, I want to make it look like I'm thinking, I'm yeah, pensive. some grain. Yeah, no, this, this is like a legit candid shot. Artist. Artist. Right, right. <laughs> and they had plans and, and our friend Chris Taylor, right, you wrote that wonderful book, How Star yep. Wars Conquered the Universe. And, and, and it really goes into detail about how George, we know he wanted to do his own Flash Gordon serial because they couldn't do Flash Gordon, but they wanted to go to Apocalypse Now. That was their film. Kurtz wanted that. And so that, I think, the, the core of him as an artist was that kind of stuff. Yeah. And I think George, too. But then George goes through a divorce. Uh, you know, he ad adopted, uh, I think, both uh, the first of yeah. his uh, three kids. He saw sure. how much merchandising, merchandising there's made. That yeah, that was well. the thing. Yeah, that's, I mean, that's the crux of it. From what I read from that 2010 LA Times interview, yeah. he was like, George only cares about toy merchandising and not about story. Yeah, and, and we did just open some toys. I think there's a balance. Yeah. There's, uh, absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Kurtz was like the uh, internet uh, YouTube comments uh, in 1983. He was he was there. But well, yeah, no. I but you're right, Kim. There there is a balance. There, this is absolutely why <laughs> why why it spread. Why it conquered the universe because we were able to take it home. It's the best form of marketing ever. The movies in your hands. The movies in your house. Um, and we don't take into consideration that we're talking about 1983 here and when 77 when the original movie came out merchandising for movies wasn't a big thing it really got cracked open wide yeah. with episode four and then carrying on and then all movies started to do it after that big boom but that was still pretty fresh from 77 to 83 right. and George wanted to saw how much money and how much money he made from be, his, built his empire on the merchandising and that's why they switched it around today it's like there's merchandising for everything I yeah. mean, you you know, we we get, get schmo down action figures, and we get a, a, a quarter a quarter of nonsense. Right. So it's like everybody everybody has. I want a quarter. Of you want nonsense. a quarter of nonsense, but everybody has merchandising for everything. Like like yogurt says, merchandising, merchandise. <laughs> well, didn't Star Wars kind of like kick it off? Yes. I mean, if you yeah. watch the the toys that made us of Kenner. It's like at first no one really wanted to do it, yeah. and then they realized, oh no, there's so much money here. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, yeah, well, I mean, even even this wonderful piece that you're wearing now, Kib, like that allows you to, you know, without a doubt, I'm sure Leia is a character that influenced you, brought you into Star Wars, and now you kind of get to not. I walk have around. a Han, full Han Solo outfit too. That well, I wear. Oh, I've, and I've seen that. Yeah. I've seen that. <laughs> um, but my point is, you, you you get to, you know, it influences, and you get to then use it to represent yourself and your fandom and your love. So. I understand what Kurtz was saying, though, yeah. in terms of story. I do, yeah. too. As much as I love my toys. Um, yeah, Return of the Jedi definitely has the yub-nub ending. Yeah. What'd you call it? The teddy bear picnic? The teddy bear teddy picnic. Yeah. It's yeah. my least favorite ending. Yeah. Well, that's it. Yeah. Gary Kurtz will be remembered that's it. for the... <laughs> that's it. That's it. Congratulations on your life, Gary. That's it. No, 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 but that's <laughs> it, though. Uh, he was. He will be missed. He will be remembered. Yeah. He uh, he was monumental to the Star Wars franchise um, mm -hmm. and gone too soon. 70. 78, 78. Uh, and one of his final interviews, a friend of the show, uh, Jamie Stangroom, yep. over from the UK, yep. uh, did interview him on his YouTube That's channel. Cool. Check it out. All right, now before we move on to the next story, why were you grouchy last week? What happened? He hurt your, you hurt yourself. Well, I did hurt myself. Oh, yeah, yeah, deadlifts. Don't do those after the age of 20. Um, cool. No, um, I got a, I just, you know, I just, I you know I love Star Wars, and I yeah. get a lot of crap for loving Star Wars unabashedly. Oh, I see. And I just, I just been a little grumpy about uh, some of the solo pushback. Oh. And I just uh, kind of, I, I, unfortunately, Perry was talking, and then it, it looked like I was mad at Perry, and it wasn't 
never be mad at Perry Nemiroff. Right. I just got a little grumpy. Yeah, I don't think you need apologize to apologize. To I don't think you need to apologize to anybody for that. I think we're all out to be grumpy. Um, I know I've made a career out of it. All right, let's go into the <laughs> next. And I have too. You yeah. know that. Let's go to the next uh, next category. Next category, well, whatever topic. <laughs> There, uh, you, like you said, there isn't a lot of Star Wars news, but we we got the first the digital release of Solo Star Wars Story. Now the Blu-ray and the 4K and all those things. I, I woke up early, went and got the 4K, and realized I actually I don't have a 4K player yet. So uh, at least I have the Blu-ray in that package. Uh, a lot of wonderful special features, and then uh, that's part of why a lot of this has been released. But there was a nice little featurette on how uh, uh, that was released. That we've seen some clips of this Donald Glover and how flying the Millennium Falcon blends practical and visual effects, which I think. Is one of the best things this movie did more than any other movies. We we the least sets are lived in. They're yeah. real. You had a chance to catch that, Christian? Not yet. Uh, I'm going to, and, and, it's, and this is probably the worst thing to do when you're opening up toys and uh, and and Xboxes promoting uh, a movie. But like, I, I'm finding myself just like not as interested in this movie than a I was when I was looking forward to seeing it in the theater, and b I tried watching it with my wife. Um, to see if I can get her into it. She bailed on the worm creature. We're going to go back into it. Um, I just... The movie's fine. I, it just doesn't feel... I don't know. That's my hot take of the yeah. movie. I mean, you're not allowed to say it, but it was, it was fine. It was fine. You know? It's, it's usually you have to have a crazy good or a crazy bad reaction to every movie. That's, that's the law. Age, you have, yeah. to, you have uh, to have your five-star rating or your two one-star rating yes, right away. It's but fine. it was... It's fine. I mean, I don't think it was necessary, but there were a lot of cool parts... I regret missing that Denny's breakfast I was invited to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah that, well, you mm-hmm. know what the thing is also with this with, with the movie is that after that, la- because last week you guys talked about the Iger stuff, and I don't and I don't know whose take it was, but I, I and maybe it's yours. So I disagree with the fact that we're that they everyone thought that it meant we're not doing one movie a year. We're we're definitely still doing one movie. Oh, a year. I, uh, I definitely. Um, think we're yeah, doing I day. think that all it meant for Bob Iger was that that they they put out. Last Jedi. Then they just said, "Well, what's the next movie? It's Star Wars. Let's put it out in May, and that'll do just as well." Uh, there was no strategy behind it's it. It's not a, it's not a May release. No, it wasn't a May because they they stuck their flag in in December and they they conquered December yeah. and then they went away from it and they basically went head to head with their own property in Avengers. It was it was idiotic when it came to what Disney does. Um, so that was one thing. But the other problem is that there was no strategy as far as where they were going with the movies. And I think that that's what Bob Iger said last week. Bob Iger said, we're strategizing now. We're having, we have a plan with the, with the Benioff and Weiss stuff. And I still, even if people are making a big thing, my brother said, well, they didn't mention Ryan Johnson's things. I mean, it's not happening. It's still happening. It's still happening. Just, good for some people, bad for some people, whatever, it's happening. Um, but I think that they're going to strategize. They're going to have a game plan, which is something I've been screaming from the the mountaintops to do. And I think that, I think we're in the new phase here. And and I, and I believe positivity is going to come from all sides. I've already felt it on on from the fan base and everybody too. So we'll see. I can't believe how small Val is on this poster. I know it's a oh, side note, back, yeah. but she's, I don't know, maybe a hundred of her could fit into Han, but uh, yeah, yeah I, I, and that reminded me that was a problem I had with this movie. Fanny Newton, yeah, she was, was so wasting, good. Wasting her. She was wasted. Um, I agree with you, and I, and I think that they even said, but I did like that they addressed, I think that um, Kasdan addressed it. The younger he addressed Kasdan. it, but it was problematic in the way he addressed it. It's, what do you it, say? It, it, I think John is... Uh, is really good at being out and about, but he's you know still sometimes you, 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 in this internet age you gotta you gotta answer things to the uh, get take some time to thought which I'm sure he did, but he did it it, it it was came off very much as ah I didn't realize she was that good uh. um, <laughs> and I look I I think the character I would have liked the character Val and Rio to live longer I just think they they needed to die in this moment this is a story that serves Han Solo right. but it happened so early happened so fast. And everyone's looking at Tandy Newton as this wonderful actor, and we want to see her uh, do something more. And so it, it absolutely has that feeling of, okay, that happened. I wanted to see more with that team. I wanted that team to yeah. connect more for the majority of the movie. Then when you do lose her, it made more of an impact. Because the reason why it made an impact is because she's right. so good, and because it's Tandy Newton. You're like, yeah. If you listen to Lawrence Kasdan explain the train heist, that's exactly what they were hoping for. He want, This was Han's first four way into the criminal world yeah. and it needed to cost something so that when he still decides to do it there's this that's what he's experiencing it just it happened so early that I, that was I just would have liked to have seen that movie I think that 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 movie of them just running together that whole crew for the whole movie and then you can put in Voss t- towards the end maybe that's sure. the last mission or whatever it is too 
but you know, it's neither here nor there. It's 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 in the books. It's on Blu-ray. You can you know, it, some people. My my friend from back home wrote me had never seen the movie. I think people are starting to discover it now. They right? are, yeah. And and people are loving it because my my friend. Was, what are people talking about? I love this movie. It's great. And I think the casual fan really loves it. So it's on Blu-ray. You can catch it. And now we're going to move on to our next story. Uh, well, the, guess what, buddy? That's the end of movie news. That is it. That is. Wow. Like you said, we didn't have a lot of movie news. No, and I, and I think everything's going to kind of start to get into high gear once the episode nine stuff really starts to move. They're shooting yeah. right now. I, I think the majority of the casting news is already out there. So that was the big stuff that broke. You know, once we, I think I, this is a question that we've asked before. We'll ask it again. And Kim, I'll start with you here. Mm. Do in 2015 in November, we got a teaser f uh, that broke the internet inside of The Force Awakens. Will we get a Thanksgiving type tease for episode nine? What do you think? Yeah. You do think so? Yeah. Well, I mean, they said they were fixing things, yeah. hopefully. And that's, that's the formula that works. They're never going to get the same hype that Force Awakens had. Uh, I remember I went to celebration that year mm. and I was crying yeah. like yeah. openly. There's, you know, I was eating my Star Wars toast and crying because they were showing <laughs> off novelty items like toast. toast. But toast. it's never, we're never going to have that feeling of Star Wars is back right. for real this time. Right. And I treasure that, but I don't think it's happening again. Yeah, yeah. that moment, I agree with you. I think that was a one, once in a lifetime kind of special magic moment. Um, but I think that the excitement for episode nine will certainly be there. But Ken, do you think they're going to hit it in November? Or maybe because it's not that kind of excitement, they don't need to. They can save it till April, show us our first trailer at Celebration. Because we all know that we're getting a trailer at Celebration. Yeah, Celebration. <laughs> I... I uh, Kim's 100% right. We can never go back to that moment in, in November of 2014. And then later on, me in Prim, Nevada at the gas station at the border crying, oh. watching Han Solo say, hey, wait, we're home. Like, uh, that's something we'll never get to experience again. But I, I would like, um, it's weird because Solo does come out in May, and I think it should have come out in December too. But now we have this gap, and it feel, it's starting to feel like a gap. It's starting to feel like, oh, uh, resistance. Yeah, well, we, so I'd like a, 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 a holiday weekend or a Black Friday shopping extravaganza yeah. weekend of just one little clip of nine. I think it would... It would get but do you excited. think they have something to prove now with the, you know, I would say so-so reaction to Last Jedi? See, I, I think it's on their mind. Like, yeah. it's whether or not it's you know, something to prove or anything, it's, it's on their mind. It also depends they, on who you talk to. They know they can to. do it wrong. They're thinking about it. It yeah. also <laughs> depends on who you talk to. Remember, we, we run in a very different circle here. We're, yeah, we're, right, we're, inside, the, yeah. we're inside the fanboy so. bubble, though. No, no, no that's, no, what, that's oh, what I'm oh, saying. Yeah. No, I always say that. We are inside the We are inside the, the, the of bubble, the yeah. hardcore Star Wars fan base, right? Mm -hmm. So we have, we're, we're in the middle of the Civil War, right? So there are, there are yeah. the people who love Last Jedi. There are people who feel it's not that great. But there are other, the casual fans that just saw them the movie made a lot of money yeah. it made to, to them it is a massive success so they might not be i mean i feel that they should try to and i think jay i no matter what they say and i know i get blowback from this every single time i believe that if you really if you talk to jj abrams with the cameras off with the microphones off and you ask him his true thoughts on the last jedi he's n not a big fan of it that's my that's my that's my thought um you can say oh how do you know that that's just my <laughs> that's, that's my speculation okay yeah. I think his version of episode nine will be radically different from episode eight. So regardless of whether or not they're trying to prove, we're gonna see more similar mm. um, feel and tone to Force Awakens. Now you might love that, you might hate that, but um, I think that that's what we're gonna get. We're gonna get more of a continuation to the movie he made than the one Ryan Johnson made. Do you think we're gonna get more of those so-called behind the scenes pictures on his Twitter and Instagram? Uh, yes. Where they're he, like, oops, what's oh, this yeah. in the background? He, oh, I don't know. He loves Sad. doing that. And yeah. He, lo he loves, <laughs> yeah, he loves teasing us. He loves giving out false He's information. Good. He loves giving out, he likes to mess with the fans. He likes to reward the fans. Um, I believe when it's time, he will be doing that. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Uh, well, do I think JJ is going to tease do us? All that oh, stuff. yeah, 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 he's yeah. Do that. yeah, uh, yeah. It, it's it, and you talk about the casual. I, I've said this before, but it's um, you know, my dad loved the Force Awakens and called me and was like, I think they're going to leave it open for a sequel. So <laughs> right, right. there's a right. lot more fans like that who are spending a lot of money on it as well. And and you do have to communicate to um, that that hey, this movie is coming out and it is what it is. Yeah. So. But that's why marketing pushes people don't realize like and i can't i think it was might have been cops or somebody else too like oh you don't even need to market star wars you could just you, know, you just drop it and it's fine it's like no you can't do that because the like i can't tell you how many people didn't know 
what the hell Solo was, even after mm-hmm. it came out. The marketing mm-hmm. push in that movie, to, even when you got behind the scenes, was terrible. Yeah. Um, because they were pushing Avengers. You've got to market it to those fans. Like, yes, everybody watching this show and everybody connected to the movie space, if you're a movie hardcore fan, of course you know Star Wars is coming out. But there are people who don't know it's coming out. There are people who aren't sure if Episode Nine is coming out. Like, right. like you said, your dad probably has no idea what the hell he is does going. not. He'll yeah. see the trailer and be like, oh. "It's still going, huh?" Right. But in a exactly. positive sense, not right. like a snarky. Just be like, no. "Oh, awesome! Cool. I'll go see a new that. one." Yeah, and that's that's I like the they, special effects. He says that's why the marketing pushes are so so crucial. Yeah. Um, but anyway, so that's uh, that's that's that story. What's next? <laughs> well, let's. Let, uh, we're, we're in canon now, what a right? Button. <laughs> That is the button. That is that is the, again two weeks out, and I am just ready to see casually talking to me. And I talk, and you know, here's a conversation. I don't mind doing this on here. And I did this. Um, mm. I did this beforehand. We were getting to this thing about podcasting versus um, mm. YouTube in general. And I just believe that you guys know my stance on it. I think that Collider Live to me has been something that I've wanted to do for a long time. It's it's more of like a casual morning radio show. I p- forget the cameras are even there. I have pitched doing this show more like a radio show mm. just just having a conversation where all of this look at each other i know that if you're people don't like change so the hardcore star Can wars be fan, both though i mean yes but this is to me this this studio here is very tv it's like you say your opinion you say yours you say yours i say mine hello when you listen to your star wars yeah. information when you're listening to it do you want to listen to it do you want to watch people how do you feel about it I'm in digital media, mm-hmm. but I do appreciate podcasts. I was listening to two podcasts on the way over here. And it's, it's easier and more convenient to digest when life is tedious and boring, like mm-hmm. when you're driving or when you're doing your laundry. You can kind of multitask, which is kind of the way I consume a lot of things now, right. whether I like it to yeah. admit it or not. The multitasking thing yeah. where it's on in the background? Yeah. or yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I'll put on a Netflix show and right. I'll clean my house at the same time. Right. Yeah. You're a yeah. radio guy. So, I yeah. mean, like, that was where you, you're, that's your, that was your bread and butter for a it long was. time. So, yeah, I, mean, I, w- I was a morning show guy. Yeah. Um, yeah. What's what do you think? Well, the question is, too, well, not only the digesting your, your Star Wars stuff, right, yeah. too, but you've got, you've got Four Center. You do this. Like, you, what's your, what's your thought on it? Do you think that uh, you like doing the, the TV type show? I do. I do. I do. Yeah. It, I, it's, it's, it's a skill. Hosting is, is a skill. Um, it just, but, you know, as Kim will tell you firsthand, we've all gone through some changes in our careers and lives <laughs> what? recently. What? Yeah. Um, it, it, it's, <laughs> you always got to be ahead of the curve. Yeah. Um, but interesting enough, podcasting is just broadcasting when done right. Right. We'll say not a lot of people do it as right as, yeah. they, as they think they do in terms of broadcasting. But I'm also an old crusty radio guy so <laughs> who hits the post and, and, and reads my liners. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, at Force Center, we 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 put out over four hours of of audio, new audio content every week, and right. it, I think it becomes a part of people's lives, which is what Kim is saying. Mm-hmm. It becomes part of her life, whether she's consciously, oh, I need this podcast every day, though. It's become part of your routine, and you feel so. I'm sure I don't know what shows you listen to. What- this morning, I was listening to one with Darcy Carden because The Good Place is coming back today, and I'm right. excited for yeah. that. You're excited, for The Good Place. Yeah. Yeah. So it connects and yeah. it's part of, it's just, you know, uh, it's just conversation to me, I think is the yeah. thing that I gravitate towards. And like we're in real conversation just comes out more than just topic based stuff to where it's mm-hmm. like, mm-hmm. that's why we've been trying to drive this show in general. Like, I just want to hear like thoughts. If we don't hit all the topics, who cares? As long as we have a good conversation about it. Yeah. Like for example, on my drive, it took me 50 minutes to get here. All I listened, I was listening to the Joe Rogan show with the interview with Elon sure. Musk. And that's what I listened to today. And I was like, that's the I, kind of the conversations that I just like to I hear. still believe in my heart that the entire, entire digital, digital media world is built on one show. Pardon the interruption. For, pardon the interruption. On ESPN. Yeah. I think everyone saw what Tony, Co- Tony uh, I can't talk to yeah, Tony Wilbon and, Kornheiser Kornheiser, and Michael yeah. Wilbon did and thought that's what people want and, and for a long time that's what people did yeah. want. Um, topics scrolling, two guys two, two newspaper guys debating um, well, there you go. But it changes. All right, and, well, and change is good. And change is good. And I'm sure that we've started a conversation here in the YouTube chat. But now we're going to move on to that segment <laughs> we simply call what are they gonna talk about What's the Deal with Canon? <laughs> well, we were talking about Star Wars inside of that. It's like, how do, how do we transition? Did say the word Star Wars. What's the evolution of this, of this show? Cut back to um, me. I'm playing Sabacc. Excuse me. What's I'm happening so in the world of Canon, my friend? Well, a lot of comic books. Uh, we got uh, Star Wars Resistance is 
coming out, some synopsis of the episodes uh, released, and the news that Elijah Wood will be guest starring in the series. Uh, so let's start with the com comic books. As always, I am always behind. As I'm much. always two to three weeks yeah. behind in my comics, but the Poe Dameron Wraps run, up, right? Uh, it is done with this uh, issue, so I have not taken a, a look so there might be some spoilers. And Dr. Afro, who continues cover. to be, yeah, that's a great cover, continues to be one of the more popular characters uh, who's really finding her legs in the comics. And uh, I, I still would, her and Ray Sloan are the two characters I want to see make the jump to, to live action in some way. Mm -hmm. um, I haven't. Uh, I, I haven't di taken the dive in though. I'm sure you haven't. You're like me, a little bit. I'm a little bit behind. I mean, it's still, I'm, I'm more caught up on the Vader. Vader one. That's my. That's my favorite. The Vader one's looking great. Cam, yeah. are you caught up on any of these yet? Nope. Okay, that's fair. Um, a lot of people aren't yet, and I think that there's there's a lot to digest. There's a lot of good mm -hmm. things. To, I love the cover for Doctor Afra for sure. Yeah. Poe Dameron, I hear great things because there's tie-ins to um, yeah. to other things inside of the series. Yeah. Uh, the the overall Star Wars it's series. Gone Beyond the end of Last Jedi, right? Uh, but also it's flashing back to Force Awakens and filling in those little cannon Which holes. Which was smart. It was yeah. a good move to do. So yeah. I'm looking forward to catching up as well. You can catch Poe Dameron issue 31 or Doctor Aphra issue 24. But I do want to touch on you brought up Resistance. Yes. So I had a chance. I can't review it yet, but I had a chance to watch episodes one and two. Did you as well? No. Okay. What? So <laughs> where did he you says get that these? Casually, like we're not common folk around here. I, I saw one and yeah, two. Yeah, I'm a normal person. <laughs> I went and I interviewed Donald Faison, Bobby Moynihan, oh. uh, Christopher Sean, and. Um, I love how Donald Faison's character's name is Hype Faison. Hype Faison. <laughs> and I talked to him about that. And I talked to him about that. I talked to Bobby Moynihan, friend of the show. Um, I talked to Susie McGrath as well. And it, those interviews will be able to air next week as well as my review on the series. What I'll say about the series is this. And I know that a lot of people had their thoughts about the trailer. When Lucasfilm bought, when Disney bought Lucasfilm, you have to realize this, that there are going to be there's going to be stuff that is directed towards kids and adults. There's going to be stuff that is, this is like a Saturday morning cartoon. Mm -hmm. And it, it reminds me a little bit of Robotech, the, the, the actual you know, yeah. animation of it. But it, my, it's on Disney. This is geared towards my seven-year-old daughter. Mm -hmm. or, or, or it could be for your seven-year-old son. It is geared for kids. And everyone says, well, Star Wars in general always was geared for kids. This is something for them. It is not as maybe dark as Clone Wars. There's these things. And and I'm liking where it's going as well, I'll say. That's the most I can give right now. Um, mm -hmm. But you're obviously very excited for this series, yes? I'm interested. I okay. like the way it looks. Mm. Um, I don't think it's nearly as ugly as Rebels or... <laughs> but I know what you mean. I, I'm so, I hate Rebels, to say Rebels it. Rebels had a very specific People look. won't like it. Right. But I think it looked hideous and it was hard for me to watch. I thought it was worse than Toy Story from 1995. Wow, even at the end. Uh, no, would, let me take you, my hood off. You're yeah. not the first to say that, though. So the first is, episode, I, I, I'd love to hear more. Okay, please. Yeah. I just, it's, it, I can't keep up with it because I hate the way it looks. Yeah. There's this level of CGI that I'm used to, and it looks like there's a Mickey Mouse show that's at the same level of CGI mm. that I just, I just don't like it. I need to be... You know, it's shallow, but I like visuals, and mm -hmm. the visuals are difficult for me to look at. Wow, for Rebel see, I, I felt that way for the first episode, because the Wookiees looked atrocious. I thought yeah. that they took the notes and got better with it. I respect the opinion, opinion, of course, but like I thought that I actually did like the animation in Rebels towards the second season on. I thought it got, it got much better. But Can this, I hop in without watching season one? Have you ever have you ever seen so, so I've watched season parts of season one and I was like I hate this like, oh this is yeah. a chore I can't do this okay well yeah I mean two two from season two of Rebels is some of the best Star Wars yeah, storytelling I think, that I've I think seen you in a could time. hop in okay yeah. because they because they definitely it's not so much like the previously on thing but mm. you're gonna get that sense mm. they got that dialogue of remember that mission we were on like and you're gonna be like oh I do now yeah. yes yeah, yeah. so yeah. yeah I think you you, you could give it a, give it a I, shot I loved season two I thought season two was some of the again best storytelling in Star Wars. Um, yeah, but yeah, it, it, one of the problems I had, and I maybe still have, I think this, the in Rebels, we're talking about Rebels and not Resistance, is the, sp is the space battles always look great to me, but I didn't like a lot of the color schemes. <laughs> the color schemes, I was like, that's not the, the bright orange and the yellows, but again, goes to commercial, it's yeah. Disney XD. I'm like, okay, and I see that here, but uh, the effect I'm having here, I love that every ship has a color and then the pilot kind of has the, you know, if you're flying red, you got red, that's... yeah. 
I grew up loving it Robotech. Reminds, yes. And Max and Miriam, Max flew blue and Miriam flew red. And like that's, and like that has a great yeah. nostalgic feeling for me. The thing that yeah. I found interesting, I'm not going to say concerning, but interesting, Dave Filoni created this series, right? Mm. He was nowhere to be found during these interviews. He is not the executive producer of this show. Um, there are new executive producers of this show. Doesn't, Do you think that means he doesn't stand by it? No, 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 no. I don't think that at all. I think that he, I, yeah, he, he's not the type of person that would put his, his name and stamp on this, let it launch and release it. He just, I think that he created it. He came up with it and said, he's moving on and doing other things. I think he's going to have a heavy presence in the live action show with mm -hmm. Favreau. But I, he created this show, handed it off to these executive producers that he does trust. And so that's where I say I'm not concerned. I'm intrigued to see what they do now with this new Star Wars narrative. Do mm. you, I mean, do you think that this concern that he's not hands-on, I mean, he might be hands-on, but when I talked to the actors, they hadn't even talked to him really that much at all. They're dealing with these, exec, these new exec producers. I mean, Dave Filoni is a name that means a lot, and having him attached to this does lead at a certain level of credence. I, would he take his name off something? No. So, no. I don't know. I, it, it's a toss-up. He, yeah. So I'm, I'm trying to look at the credits here now. He's he obviously executive producer, but it, it's it's really in the hands of Athena Portillo, Justin Ridge, and yes, Brandon. That's what I'm. Um, of course, he's got a producer credit on, but I mean, he's yeah, not, he's no, not I, like I, the I active executive yeah, yeah, I think it was it was uh, for lack of a better phrase, uh, it's like he franchised this in a sense yeah. of like, I'm going to open up a Whataburger. Could you run it for me? <laughs> Thank you. That's exactly right. That's exactly right. He, he came up with the idea, the premise, and, and, and they, they trust him with animation. He's like, this is what I want to do with it. I trust in you guys. Here's my vision. Run with it. That's what I think. That's what it seems like. But like I said, it's the first time I've ever gone to an animation Star Wars thing where he wasn't there. Right. Like right, I asked right. for the interview. I'm like, no, he's not, he's not here. I'm like, oh. So right. um, interesting. So we'll see. My full review of that will come next week, as well as those interviews with uh, the cast. We'll run them here on Jedi Council first, and then put them up on um, on the channel. Wow. All right. Anything next in canon? Uh, is that no, we talked about Elijah Wood. I just, you know, yeah, hey, cool. anytime I can get a Lord of the Rings crossover into Star Wars, we got Dom Dominic Moynihan yep. in nine. We got uh, Wood here. That works for me. Um, we got uh, oh the video game here. I know you know you and I, uh, I. I play Battlefront still. I know you don't. Do you, you, you? I used you're to play gamer. Battlefront, yeah. but yeah, okay. I, I game. Yeah, yeah. So uh, Lucasfilm announced the Star Wars Vader Immortal VR game. Uh, David S. Goyer wrote it. I didn't, I'm not laughing at him. I just didn't know that was uh, mm -hmm. something he was working on. And it's, uh, this is a VR. It's for Oculus Quest 2019. Uh, I do not currently own anything like this. Um, so the only VR I have is when I walk around my house playing Star Wars in my own uh, cape and lightsaber. Just I have that <laughs> Kylo Ren thing I took from my last Lights job. off. Mm -hmm. Music vroom, playing. Vroom, yeah. vroom. Uh, that's my VR. But, uh, that's the classic VR for yeah. yeah, Star one, Wars. The one we all grew up with. Yes. What do you think, Kim? Is this something you'd want to you'd want to? I don't have an out? Oculus either, and okay. that's yeah. an issue. A lot of people yeah. don't have this hardware. I mean... A lot of people don't have VR hardware in general, if you're talking about the Vive or, or what have you. Mm. Even fewer would have the Oculus. I wish it wasn't exclusive. Yeah. Mm. Well, yeah. here's the thing, though. As VR starts to make a bigger push, I'm, I'm lucky enough to where Mark Fernandez is very, the owner of the company is very, um, he's obsessed with VR. So mm. when new VR comes in, we try it out, we test it out. So we'll be testing that out. I think that the way VR needs to eventually get people to get all I mean, this it's stuff, an right? industry problem. Is they've I mean, been, it is. They've been being like, VR is the next thing for years now, three, four years at this point, and it's still not really there at that consumer level. I agree. And I think that when the, game, the first game that comes in that pops, it's like, is the halo of VR, mm. that's when VR will start to catch on more. Will this one be it? I don't know, but I am excited to play it. If I get to be Vader running around chopping down uh, rebels and, and you know, maybe being a conflicted, a conflicted Sith Lord, <laughs> sign me up. I'm going to try to do it. I'm going to see, and I hope that it's the one that I say, this is the VR game everyone needs to play because that's, a, that's essentially what they need to do. They mm. need to get imbeciles like me to play and say, I'm telling you, get right. yourself an Oculus because this is this is mind blowing. The the, the the leaps and bounds better than anything else. Or it could be like this is just like another type of standard VR game that we just have Makuga get scared of and then and that's it. Yeah, I mean, I did the uh, was the Battlefront the first one that released that VR mission. It was just that one X wing one. Did you have a chance to do the, I didn't the do that one? one? And I was at our good friend JT's house. JT, get well, get better. We were thinking better. about you. Getting He's better. getting better. Um, 
And he, we, we, we did a test of it there. And I had the same, like, eh, hey, what a, what a 3D in my face. And I, I felt like I was in that cockpit. It was fun. But it was only one little mission. Right. So if, you, if, if that can play out, you know, and I have the room in my living room to, you know, move my Wii Fit aside. I don't have a Wii Fit anymore. Uh, and, and play that. I, I, yeah, like I said, an imbecile like me, if, I can, if you can get me hooked, then that's how, that, you That's know, what they need work. to do. But, yeah. You I gotta, don't know if it's going to happen, though. Because I, I, I usually agree. what yeah. happens, I mean, historically... Porn pushes technology forward. That there is, is VR porn. That is the truth. And yeah. it still hasn't pushed it forward. Mm. So if porn can't do it, can <laughs> Star Wars? Can Star Wars. I've got to be honest. Didn't think the conversation was going to go that way. That's the title <laughs> of your episode right there. That's it. Porn and VR and Star Wars. What's next? <laughs> but, that, but that's also 100% right. So, <laughs> right. I've, I've yeah. tested it before at yeah. E3. Yeah, it is crazy. I because they put me there like you're going to be a man now, and I went whoa. That could change the face of the world. Yeah, but it so hasn't I mean, yet. but you know, if let's say you're not, yeah, in that world, yeah, yeah. role playing as Darth Vader right. is a pretty cool thing, and it might reveal some <laughs> motivations that maybe we didn't think about before. And it's possible. It's just, the question is the stats, like you said, historically right now say it'll probably be just be one. Yeah, that was cool. I played it, but could it be the one that breaks out? Time will tell. We'll all right. See. That's everything. That's it for canon, that's buddy. Canon. All right. Well, that's everything canon. We don't know also that story inside of uh, Vader. Is it going to be a canon it's, story? It's at, uh, yeah, I don't, it's at Vader's castle. Uh, okay. It's all that kind so of stuff. So we'll find that out. We'll, we'll inundate uh, Pablo Hidalgo with tweets once it comes out. He loves that. Yeah, he loves oh, that so much. Okay, Pablo. let's get into, now we get to talk to you guys. You guys are watching live, and Ken will go through some of the questions in the chat room. We will also go to the Facebook group on the Collider Jedi Council Facebook group. And of course, hashtag Collider Jedi Council on Twitter. Ken, give me something. All right, I'm going to go because uh, uh, I have to admit, on the, since we've gone live, I've kind of uh, had a tr- had, had, I'm mentally blocked going to the Jedi Council Facebook group okay. because I'm looking on Twitter at the hashtag. So I'm in the Facebook group right now. And here's a question from Isabella Rabone. She says, where do you see Chewie ending up at the conclusion of the saga? Thanks so much. Thank you, Isabella. Uh, I We don't get that question a lot. I've never really thought about that. Hopefully not squished by a moon, but what say you? He'll live. Um, he will live. Uh, and I think that um, it, it really is going to... I think J.J. wants to wrap this whole thing up after 9. I think that they're not going to keep it... It's going to look like it's going to be closed. Now, whether or not in 5, 10 years from now they open up episode 10, certainly possible. But I think Chewie will go back to Kashyyyk Mm. Um, and I think he'll be, I think he'll be happy. I think that things will things will end well for him. I hope. Will he unabandoned Lumpy? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. it's true because he's canon now, right? Lumpy, he is. Yeah. He's an aftermath. Yeah, Lumpy, and <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that. Yeah, yeah, go back to his family because he went back yeah. to his family for a little bit during the in between Jedi and Force Awakens. But then he went yeah. back to join to join them. So I think he'll go back and be with his and family. He, and he te- he mentions his father in Solo. That's when he says okay. his name. He says, "I'm Chewbacca, son of right. Itchy." But he says, "Itchy's real." He's name. gonna he's gonna get the Falcon too. By the way, you think he's gonna I, I mean, he's gonna he better? Yeah, I, I mean, he deserves it. He does. I love Ray. I like I like the I like the fact that she had such this this bond with the Falcon. But it's Chewie's. <laughs> Chewie, <laughs> Chewie, it's Chewie's. Give it a Chewie. Mm. All right. Uh, let's go to a live Twitter question. If you use the uh, hashtag Collider Jedi Council, I'm going to find you a whole lot easier. Rocky Drago 66. You He's, like Rocky? I love the Creed 2 trailer. Creed 2 trailer. Sign me up. You like, did you see the Creed 2 trailer? I did. I saw it yesterday and yeah. I got chills. Yep. Chills. They're multiplying. Let's just sing nice. Grease. All right. Rocky asked this question. And I think it's interesting. That's why I'm choosing it. Mm-hmm. Why are people okay with certain famous actors like Tom Hardy and Michael Fassbender being in the Star Wars films? Or I'm adding, always suggesting yes. hey, they could be Star Wars films. But not okay with other famous actors like The Rock, Jennifer Lawrence, or Leo DiCaprio. Just some examples there. I think it's because they haven't been in blockbusters. Uh, and people like The Rock and Jennifer Lawrence definitely have. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Well, the only thing, not to disagree, but... Fastbender's been in the X Men movies. Tom Hardy's been in Batman. Oh, you're but, right. Well, Bane, Batman. But Bane. I forgot. Bane. That's what I was saying. I was like, you don't see him. But I mean, but, who would they play though? Minor yeah. characters, major characters. But even so, what I will agree with you on there, I think that the difference is that the perception, right? Jennifer Lawrence is a very good actress. I don't think, but she has gotten to a place that where it's like she's like DiCaprio, same thing, or Tom Cruise, right? Movie star. Hmm. You see them now. You got to really tap into a performance to go away from that's Jennifer Lawrence now. As, and Fassbender and Tom Hardy still have that, oh, they can tap into 
anything here like the, that type of actor. Oh. Leonardo DiCaprio was a fantastic actor, but he's still Leonardo DiCaprio. You got to get around. Like when you see performances in The Revenant and you see performances in The Wolf of Wall Street, you go, that's a great performance, but you're still looking at Leonardo DiCaprio. Can you transcend past it? I'd still like to see Leonardo DiCaprio in a Star Wars movie. I'd be cool with it. But so what we need is an actor who can disappear into a role. I think so. And not just be, that's the rock. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I would, I'd absolutely love the rock, but yeah, that would be the luck or awkward there. Yeah. I mean, Leo, we know almost Anakin based on urban legends yep. and some, some stories out there and some facts, but um, yeah, I think it's different of like, I could believe Dame Judy Dench as a Jedi uh, hiding for 40 years and returns. And she's the Jocasta new of this trilogy. But then I, I, you know, I have Jennifer Lawrence on the screen to be like, Oh, J Law's in a Star Wars right. film, and I, again, I think she's a good actor as well. I just, yeah, it might come down to that. Um, what are some of the? Didn't Roka had some interesting? And, well, and also to the point, like yeah. Fastbender and Hardy, and, and your initial thought is, oh, they're not blockbusters, is an indication of what they can do. Yeah, because I you're mean, not thinking of it. It was wrong, but maybe it was right. Yeah, yeah, but that's right. my point. <laughs> yeah. I don't think you were wrong. I think you almost proved your own point there. Yeah, because like, he blended that it. That was on he, purpose. Well, he blended into the Take role. Credit. I mean, the, the what he did with Magneto, <laughs> and and again, then he could do something like Shame, and it's it just... Yeah, no, I, I think yeah. it, it is uh, it is the point. Uh, uh, Roka had some... He had pulled some. Do you have any? Oh, yeah, some good let's ones. go to those ones Yeah, there's as some well. good ones in there. Okay. Um, let's... Uh, Let's talk about uh, this one here. Uh, this is I like this one. Dark. Yeah. This is probably not the one you're thinking about. Okay. Mm. Dark Porkins at Dark Porkins because we all Fantastic. like Porkins to be yeah. dark and gritty. With Gracchus, Gracchus the Hut being brought up in the oh, yeah. in, in the Poe Dameron comic, it's been a character throughout that series. Uh, do you think we'll see Huts on screen again in Episode Nine? If the Huts or a Hut were to make an appearance, what kind of role would you hope for them to play? So you're talking about JJ bringing the whole series yeah. back home. <laughs> we haven't had Huts in the new films. Yeah. Huts are gangsters. Bring I, um. Yeah. Bring. What I think his name is Beldorian, the Hut Jedi. Oh wow, which one is that? Yeah. He's a he's a Jedi. He's a Jedi. Is that <laughs> it's a legend? Oh, thing, legend. Okay. Yes. Yeah. We we need yes yes. And he um, fights like a dark Sith Ewok. Uh huh. Give me a give me an actual <laughs> give me an actual physical hut. Don't, don't give me a CGI hut. They don't work. CGI huts do not work. Mm -hmm. Every they didn't work yeah. in the prequel. Didn't work in the special, special edition. Editions. Give me an actual big ass. You want to sit and yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm thinking of uh, you know Grumgar in Force Awakens. Uh, he's the big, big guy sitting there with Bazin Natel in in Maz's Bazin. Yes, yes, spy yes, that, yes, that, yes. He's practically he's big. Yeah. yeah, if you do that with HUD, yeah, that'd be kind of fun. And I also think that what they have been rumors of. There's been no confirmation of this, mm -hmm. but it, but what I hope happens, and the rumors have been that JJ is going to tie together the entire saga from prequel stuff to original trilogy stuff, to this stuff that he started. The Huts would be a way to do that if they went to Tatooine and did some kind of mission. I just had a horrible thought. What if it's Jabba's son? He's, what's his son's name? Stinky or... <laughs> no, I think he's got a... It's my, not a... He's Rada. not a Wookiee. Is it Rada the, the Hutt? Yeah. <laughs> my daughter knows that, yeah. Rada the Hutt. Yeah. yeah. Stinks. Could be. Could yeah. be Rada the Hutt. Um, all right. What's, uh, what's the next question? You just maybe, I mean, at some point, Rada's got it. We got to find yeah. out what happened with Rada. I'm there. here to avenge my uh, yeah. dad. <laughs> right, right. Well, uh, Ryan uh, Wilhoff asks here uh, on Facebook, actually, what if Carrie Russell's character is a Sith Lord, Sith Lord in episode nine? We've never seen a female Sith Lord uh, in, in, in uh, canon, not Legends, of course. Uh, uh, this this comes up a lot, the speculation of her character. Legends, we have seen one. Yeah, that's what Le I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Legends, we have. Yeah. Uh, but not in, in new canon. Uh, I mean, I'm on board for that, but what do you think? Well, unless you unless you count um, Ventress, who I don't think ever really transitioned into sure, uh, yeah, 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 and, yeah. and a great character uh, filled out in great detail by Car uh, Katie Lucas, yes, uh, George's uh, daughter, right? Um, I would absolutely love this. I've been I've been shouting from the mountaintops that we need Sith lords to reappear. Some people don't agree with me. I would love to have them back, and I think it would be brilliant if it was Carrie Russell. I think that no one would kind of see that coming. I think that she can play a darker side. If you've seen the Americans, I think that she can do um, this. I would like to see what is happening inside of it. I still think Palpatine is not gone from the Star Wars uh, saga. Mm. I think Palpatine's stamp one way or another will come back. And if it was through teachings through Carrie Russell as a Sith Lord, sign me up. Mm. Kim, any way, any chance? Do you like it? Do you hate it? I do like it. I before I didn't think of this, but mm. the more I think about it, the more I like it. I, I you would think of her in being kind of a you know maybe an Amidala type role, mm. but what if it were the complete opposite? We don't see that many 
you know, women on the um, the Empire side, mm-hmm. and definitely not in prominent roles at all. Mm-hmm. I think that's on purpose to make a hom- homogenous look. Well, I mean, that's kind of the Empire and the yeah. Emperor's like thought. Like you're supposed to, they're the they're the they're the a holes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, they're, they're so jerks. they wouldn't have diversity on their side. Yeah. The other side is diverse, and they're yeah, the yeah. good guys. Yeah, yeah, but right. it would be interesting to see. I I think I would really. I think she could do it. Yeah. And yeah. I would like to see that from her, for What's sure. What's so funny about that, that you say that, too, is inside of the canon, yeah. inside of the books, um, yeah. the Empire is diverse. Because when you look yeah. at whether it's Sienna inside of um, Lost Stars, well, yeah, yeah. Whether, it's, uh, whether it is Ray Sloan inside of you know, Aftermath, the two, I agree with you wholeheartedly when it comes to the films, not so much. But yeah. inside of the canon. So it, well, and new canon. But it, new it canon. was explicitly new stated in old canon yes, early on that yes. like, they were the, they were this Nazis. is kind of the Emperor's the problem. Nazis. Yeah, including, the Nazis. including aliens. That's why yeah. Thrawn, yeah. Thrawn had a battle that. And, and he still does in new canon, but yeah. specifically Air of the Empire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Cool. Yeah, no, but no, you're absolutely, I mean, Ray Sloan's one of my favorite characters. Uh, Cyan Ray, Lost Stars is great. Yeah, yeah, to be clear, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's, do, uh, let's do three more. Three more. Okay, I'm going to go try to find a live one here because I like talking live with the fans. Um, Freddie asks, how can I be chosen to make a Star Wars movie? Yeah, make some YouTube videos. Um, <laughs> Mike at Kenobi underscore clone. <laughs> Kenobi being a clone. Remember when that rumor was in the mid-90s that OB1 was a clone? Um, uh, Chris Gore actually wrote that article in the first ever, ever Sci-Fi Universe yeah. magazine. Uh, when are we going to uh, get a conclusion to uh, the Ezra Ahsoka storyline and in what media? Well, it's certainly not going to be Resistance. People thought that the next animated series would be that. Mm-hmm. Um, it could be a comic. It could be a book. It could be another animated series down the line. We'll see maybe... Well, I mean, they could if they wanted to. They could do an episode inside of Favreau's live-action series if they wanted to because it does fall in that time period, if I'm not um, mistaken. It's like mm-hmm. because they're, the live-action series takes place right after... Jedi, is that correct? It's within a year or two. Uh, Something along those lines. So that's essentially the era. Yeah, yeah. I would lose my mind. They did a live action in the outer rim to figure out. You know, they brought Ahsoka to the live action stage and 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 did it that way. But most likely a comic book. What do you think, Kim? I did not watch the series because I hated the (laughs) animation. (laughs) <laughs> you did say that beforehand. Um, all right. Just hide behind here. Ken, what do you think? Don't hide, don't hide for anything. <laughs> don't hide. Star Wars, Ken. That's right. Um, I think they'll wait for some uh, time to do it right and animate it. I think yeah. Dave will f- want to finish all it right. that way. Cool. Um, all right. Two more. Two more? Two more? Um, um, okay. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm scrambling. When, when it's live, you have so many more Scramble options when day. it's live, Christian. Yeah, I know you do. Sion Hughes at Sion Hughes. Uh, uh, effin, effin, uh-huh. effin. Right. Uh, what are the chances? Read the effin question. Yeah, well, you know, sometimes you know. Again, uh, my eyes are old. Mm-hmm. What are the chances of Anakin Skywalker slash Darth Vader appearing in Episode Nine? Anakin slash Vader at some point have to speak to Kylo, or at least have a talk with Luke, but Kylo or even Snoke. What say you? I think they've certainly built it in for that to be possible mm-hmm. through maybe a Force Ghost or yeah. maybe his own thoughts being so entrenched in them, thinking this is what Vader wants. Yeah. It, it's like that Force Awakens. Was that helmet talking back to him? Uh-huh. Yeah. You know? I don't what know. Are you hear it? It's vague. That, listen, <laughs> this is what they, this is kind of where I was going beforehand, where it's, this is going to be a continuation of Episode 7. And if it was a continuation of Episode 7, we did get those uh, teases that he's, like you said, he's talking to the helmet. He's got this really strong connection to Vader, and that was abandoned in 8. He doesn't even mention Vader once. Um, But if we get to that, what's happening, you could do it again in flashback to maybe Mm -hmm. he's got some kind of vision from Vader. Um, There was rumors that they were going to revisit the castle. Maybe he goes to Mustafar. Maybe he Mm. he goes to the castle. That would be great. The chances are likely... The chances are likely because of the connections to what they already set up. Um, whether or not it happens, that's up to JJ, obviously, but I would like to see it. I think that, once again, off of what I was talking about before, connecting the whole saga, that would work. In my head, it's a voice, a voice only. Sure. I, I like that. The, the, the Kylo, and you don't know if Kylo's crazy or crazier? not. Right. And maybe he doesn't know if he's crazy <laughs> or not. But hearing Vader, that would be great. Yeah. That would be cool. Yeah. Um, all right, last one. Final one here from Mario at Mario PR05. Is there a possibility that Obi-Wan could have had an apprentice in the 20-year gap between Sith and A New Hope? Let's uh, talk about Obi-Wan in the desert. 
You start. I love. I love Obi Wan in the desert, and I don't think so. I think he shut it all down. I think he uh, obviously was connected with the Force, but I think he felt that this was his mission. One of the little moments in Star Wars I love. Sorry, Kim. It's in Rebels, season three. <laughs> Damn it! And it's Obi Wan quietly waiting by a campfire for Darth Maul to show up, knowing that this is about to happen. And, it, and to me, it speaks. It's it's Obi Wan's twenty year journey in a nutshell, just waiting for destiny. And it might draw. Him, I think he developed a drinking problem. I think Wu Hair at the bar knew him personally. <laughs> like you regular, yeah. Um, I think there's a lot of problems, but I, I don't think he was an active Jedi, so to speak. I think where sense. we start a new hope. It doesn't make sense for him to have been an active Jedi because right. he's withdrawn. He's kind of curmudgeonly. He's old Ben, he's and a crazy yeah, he's a crazy desert wizard. Yeah, I don't. I mean, I love the idea. I was on board with the idea that what if Ray is a Kenobi? Right, but. I don't think it's going to happen. I agree with you. I don't. I think that the Kenobi train for now has passed. I think that there was we were that close in getting a movie, right. that close. Script, oh yeah, treatment done. Yeah. Director attached. Movie about to go, and for uh, they got cold feet after the solo stuff. We don't have it anymore, and I don't think JJ's going back to Kenobi. I just don't think it's going to happen. Uh, it doesn't tie in anything. It hasn't been set up from anything. The only thing that's been set up is in that vision. Mm. Uh, and you hear these are her first steps. Right. So maybe that's the one outside shot, but I don't think it means apprentice was. Maybe Ray will hear Obi Wan and Kylo will hear Darth Vader <laughs> and they'll have a mental battle. Right. Yeah, and we get our. Yeah, <laughs> so we get exciting a, visually. Be like Holyfield <laughs> and Tyson fighting I'm now. Okay with that. Yeah. Um, but that's it. That's everything that's that we're talking about in the world of Star Wars today. I'd like to thank you guys for tuning in today, and I'd like to thank our guests first. Kim Orcher, where can the good people find you out there in the social media land? Oh, I have a different name on every platform, right. but if you look me up, I'm there. Th that's fair and easy. <laughs> Just look her up, Kim Horcher. No, I messed it up. It should be Kim Horcher and all of them. That's <laughs> only Instagram. <laughs> Ken Napsock, how about you, my friend? I think I still you? sometimes call you Kim Scorcher. That's my Twitter name. That's your Twitter name. Uh, and it's good to have you here, by the way. You, you, I'm so happy you to be here finally. You've applied your trade in this town. You're a trusted voice, and it's good to have you here. So Thank you. Hopefully you can come back. I would love it. And, and wear the Han outfit. Yeah, I'll wear it. <laughs> Do cool. that. I have the 70s uh, blaster, not the huge, oversized, <laughs> not to scale one. Not to scale one. Uh, you can follow me at Ken Napsock uh, everywhere as of right now, including YouTube with my motivations with Ken. They're not going to get you through the day. Find me on Twitter and Instagram at Christian Harloff, but please, please, please look out for my interview with Mr. Richard Dreyfuss. That's right, the legend himself on one-on-one -on -one with Christian Harloff. We talked for over like two hours. We'll be dropping either today or tomorrow, hopefully. So be on the lookout for that. Thank you to my guests once again. Thank you to you guys, and may the force be with you, always. Hey everybody, Mark Ellis here. Thanks for watching this episode. You want to watch more? Then click up here. Or you can click right here for more great content from Collider. If you haven't subscribed to Collider Video, do so right now and share this vid with your friends. Thanks for watching.